So now, uh, looking at the turbo. So all, the, all four turbo sizes, they come with a turbine housing size of a 68 AR. Um, and the 68 AR turbine housing is what allows these relatively larger turbos to spool up so quickly and efficiently on a 3.8 liter. So uh, what you have to do, the turbo the way it comes in you in, for you in the package, it's not going to be clocked right. All right? So you want, and what you have to do to clock a turbo is to get the compressor section, the center section, which is called a CHRA, and the turbine housing to all be facing the right direction so that you can properly run boost. So what we did, just to get a good idea, you kind of want the T4 flange and the uh, outlet here for the turbo kind of facing the exact same di direction, right? Um, and if you have that facing the right direction, you're kind of in the right spot. Then you want to kind of flip the turbo up. Once you have that done there, you want to flip the turbo up and kind of get the center section needs to be in a perpendicular to the ground, 180 degrees. Because what happens here, your, your oil feed line comes in to the top of your turbo under pressure. Then the oil is drained out of the uh, oil uh, drain line down into your uh, top of your sump, like we talked about there about how we installed that earlier. Um, that goes to the top of your sump, but that's that's not under pressure. The only thing that's returning that oil from the oil return line is gravity. So if you have your center section clocked like this or sideways or something like that, the oil is never going to leave your turbo. You're going to blow your seals. And that's, again, uh, something that that's the biggest thing for any turbo, any manufacturer. You have to properly clock it. So now how to actually clock the turbo? Really simple. Take a 13 millimeter and bring to these little bolts here. And you, un, you loosen them, you, uh, you, you untighten them there. You loosen them here, and you loosen them on both the turbine housing and on the compressor housing. What that will allow, you don't need to take them out, just loosen them. What that will allow you to do is start to spin the, both the housings and spin the sec center section. Um, so again, you want to get the housings to be basically the outlet for the turbo here and the inlet for the compressor housing need to be kind of facing the exact same direction so that if you flip it like this, it's basically flat, right? You kind of want that. And then you want to make sure, once you have kind of tightened it down to get it in the right space like that, you want to spin your center section. You want to kind of turn your turbo up like this so that the outlet is coming out perfectly at a, uh, a 90 degree from the, from, you know, straight down. And then you kind of want to have it Kind of angled like that because what will happen is the turbo will actually be run kind of like this in the engine bay right so slightly off of that angle and then it'll ensure that you have a perfect perpendicular 180 degrees to the actual uh, ground so you want the compressor side right to be flowing this way parallel to the feed line yeah right there exactly Exactly. And that'll ensure that you get the right clocking there for your turbo. So Alec, quick question. What happens if someone doesn't clock their turbo right, blows the seal, and then needs to replace or rebuild the turbo? Yeah. What are our options? So, good question. So if you have the 70 millimeter uh, and you blow the center section, you blow your seals, um, it's actually not that bad. You can contact us. The, the 70 millimeter is a journal bearing. The journal bearing center sections can be replaced. Uh, the ceramic ball bearing units, unfortunately, we're gonna have to get you a new turbo. So you're gonna look at that uh, at that cost. So keep that in mind also when you are deciding which turbos that you want to go with. And that is how you clock the turbo. Before we go underneath the car, we're gonna go ahead and just get the turbo set up properly. So you want to take your gasket, take the T4 mount. And you want to go ahead, since we've already clocked the turbo in our other video, gas can go like that, T4 mount goes like that. Don't do it like this, because that goes nowhere. <laughs> you want to go like this, all right? So now you kind of got it in the right spot. So now it's there, and Buddy's fingers are helpful in this, so. Octopus hands. <laughs> We're going to make that a thing, hashtag octopus hands. Indeed. So what you want to do, Take these bell metric bolts that you'll get, and these ones go there, and actually all four of them can go up. Like this. And last.
last one. Actually, no, I take that back. This one has to go there. Okay, so now, from this, we are ready to tighten it. So three bolts go up, one bolt goes down. Yeah. Also, it would not be a bad idea to anti-seize these bolts. Yeah, especially if you live in a northern, northern area. place. Yep. Okay. They're they're galvanized, they're zinc coated, you know. Well, sorry, they're not galvanized, they're zinc coated. However, don't However. take chances. Yeah. Do not take chances. one's a little fun, but not impossible. Just kind of pull it back a little bit. you got to be mechanically adept to get this done. Indeed. No laughing matter. Ha, 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 ha. So now, Alec, are we tightening these bolts on all the way before installing anything yes. else? These ones need to be perfectly tight Fantastic. before you do that. Great. In fact, before the turbo is ready to go, you actually need to connect the uh, uh, oil drain line. Oh, oil okay. line. So what happens if we don't connect the oil drain line you before? You are pretty much almost guaranteed, never, never, and I repeat never, be able to get it to get on uh, and tightened underneath the turbo without it there. So what we do is you tighten it, you tighten these down first, then we get the oil drain line, tighten that on, and then you'll be able to, because you see right here, there's not a lot of space. So you need to get the uh, return line here on there, and, and then fish this kind of in this direction. That way, when you go and line it up, it's ready to go. Great. Otherwise, you will never be able to line that up. That sounds like a challenge to some people. Yeah, I... Yeah, if they can get it, you know, I'll go. I'll give you power a, to you. Power to you, because I've I've tried it before. It was not fun. So our turbo has this there. What we're going to do is we're going to remove this and slide it on. This is your oil return line. This is what's going to allow your turbo to drain properly. Okay. So what you're going to want to do? Take this, which is the oil, uh, the flange here or return line flange and you're going to want to get that nice nice stuff in there right so, so wait, wait Alec why are we putting the oil return line on the fitting first yes so why you want to do that first think about if you had the fitting on the turbo and then you were trying to uh, go ahead and um, then try and turn this look at that there's like no room to try and turn that fitting right there. It is just enough room here for you to be able to get this in on the, onto the turbo. It's very, you have to position the flange exactly right. And you see that? There is no room to turn this fitting. There's basically no room for flex whatsoever. No. There is, you can see it just barely gets through that channel. And that's it. You do not have a lot of options there. Great. All right. So, what's next? All right. So, next we're going to go ahead and actually attach this piece. So, before that, I'm going to go ahead and try and tighten it down. As best as you can. best as I can. While maintaining the ability to turn the flange a little bit. To try and get it right. Again, the crescent is your friend. Pretty good. Are we Teflon taping this or no? Yeah, do not test Teflon tape any of your AN fittings. AN fittings are designed to not be Teflon taped. Great. Do not want those. We gave you a lot of Teflon tape. That doesn't mean go crazy. Yeah. So what you'll have to do is just kind of play with it until you get the flange to line up right. See there? See it's lined up right about right there. So that will allow you to get the return line in 
without butting up against anything. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to get this to be flat against the turbo. So this is going to be a little bit fun. It's going to be a little bit of a puzzle. Yeah. You've got to figure out the exact alignment of everything. What I suggest is you get this part to be flat with also the flange. So if you want to get this completely flat with the flange, when you get it tight, you'll know it's good in the right spot. Brute strength. Yeah. That's how it works. Oh, man, got a little bit further. You're going to have to just play with this a little bit here and there to get it right. It takes just a little bit of patience. Ah, and let me get it right here. Exclamations of frustration not included. Yeah. Almost. Now imagine doing that on the turbo. Yeah, good luck. Have fun. Okay, that's there. That's right. Great. Perfect. Don't forget your gasket. Yeah. That's the worst thing to forget right now at this yeah. point. And what some you'll notice with some of these turbos, uh, specifically the 76, it's very big. So you may need to take one of these, crack it loose a little bit, and move the mount just a smidge. Okay, what I'll allow you to do is to get perfect fit like that right onto flange. Great. So, put the gasket in place. Get your Allen heads as well. Yeah, could you imagine. And this is why you want to put this on again also outside of of being underneath the car. You have to line up the flange, line up these bolts, line up the gasket. There's a lot of lines going on. A lot up. of lining up. So you do not want to try and do that with this inside the car. It's going to be a major pain. Major pain. You're going to spend more time doing this than you are the whole kit. Yeah. So that's why we do it outside. Of course, you're going to get your Allen key and you're going to tighten those on. All right, now everything is done. This thing can still swivel, which is good. In fact, it's how you will get the last bolt on. You swivel it to the side, you put a your Allen uh, wrench down in there, so tighten that up, then you can swivel it back. You wanna get it pretty tight against the actual uh, flange here, okay? And you want to make sure that this is facing down. If it's not facing fully down, just undo this a little bit, uh, swivel it up, and then also you can turn this section just between the two of those, you can get it facing the right direction. All right, so we go down, and this is actually going to go right to the sump. On the right. Way. Wait, the sump that we drilled in the beginning, right? Yep, exactly. Huh, makes sense. It goes right here, and this is the return down into the turbo, uh, round interior sump. Great. All right, and now this turbo is ready because it's clocked, and it's ready, to, and everything's on it to go into the car. So let's go and actually put it in the hot side parking.